for this day comes from the 44th chapter of Isaiah, verses 9 through 17. All who make idols are nothing, and the things they delight in do not profit. Their witnesses neither see nor know, and so they will be put to shame. Who would fashion a god or cast an image that can do no good? Look, all its devotees shall be put to shame. The artisans are too, are merely human. Let them all assemble, let them stand up. They shall be terrified, they shall all be put to shame. The ironsmith fashions it and works over the coals, shaping it with hammers and forging it with his strong arm. He becomes hungry and his strength fails. He drinks no water and is faint. The carpenter stretches a line, marks it out with a stylus, fashions it with planes, and marks it with a compass. He makes it in human form, with human beauty to be set in a shrine. He cuts down cedars or chooses a holm tree or an oak and lets it grow strong among the trees of the forest. He plants a cedar and rain nourishes it. Then it can be used as fuel. Part of it he takes and warms himself. He kindles a fire and bakes bread. Then he makes a god and worships it, makes it a carved image and bows down before it. Half of it he burns in the fire. Over this half he roasts meat, eats it, and is satisfied. He also warms himself and says, Ah, I am warm. I can feel the fire. The rest of it he makes into a god, his idol bows down to it and worships it. He prays to it and says, save me for you are my God. So what's going on in, in this particular text is, is God is speaking to Jacob. Um, in, in this particular piece, he is talking about um, making idols, uh, the, the choice to worship, make idols. And, and God gets into great detail around what an idol can be, what it's about, um, the fashioning of an idol, all of the things that, that can, or at least a piece of what can go into it. So, now we we may not worship idols, but um, an idol, really, if, if, if we're going to think about it, if we're going to grab a hold of this concept, is, is something that uh, we're going to spend a lot of our time and effort on. That would distract ourselves from God. And, and there's, there's the key. Sometimes these activities are not idolatrous activities, but sometimes they are as they can distract ourselves from God, right? They can be working on the house, sports, uh, any kind of activity. And it, again, it, it can be anything if it is taking our focus and our time away from God. Certainly, the message here is that God must be first. It must be the priority. And, and in, if God is the priority, it puts all of these activities that are not necessarily bad, right? But it puts them in perspective, it, in, and it actually helps us do those activities in a better fashion. Especially in a time of stress and unknown, we would do well to focus on God first and foremost before all the other pushes and pulls that we are given right now. And certainly the pandemic is doing that to us, but in a world of, of, of social media where information flies about real freely, hard to, and very hard to know what's true, what's not, all that kind of peace, that's something that's going to be with us long beyond this pandemic, right? We do well to focus on God first. That will help us discern what matters and what doesn't. Let us pray. Dear Lord, Heavenly God, help us to keep you as a priority in our lives. 
Help us to know that as you are a priority, all the rest of our activities will seem to make better sense, will give us more joy, will give us hope with you first. Dear God, as, as we live in a country that tries to figure out what policing means, we know there are many people who are hurt. We know that at the core of Black Lives Matter, they cry out because there have been too many people hurt. We know that not all police are bad and evil. We know, dear God, in the middle of this mess, what's not happening is that we don't see all of our brothers and sisters as your precious children. Help us, dear God, to order our lives in that fashion. Remind us that you love all of us and to treat everybody we see with the love and respect that you would have for us. And dear God, we ask for an end to COVID-19 and the pandemic. We look and wonder when this will end. But dear God, we need your help to get through. Be with those on the front line that they would be protected. Be with those who are ill, dear God. Be with those who have lost loved ones. And dear God, for those making decisions, we ask for a clear and concise direction. And we ask for your wisdom to be with them. It is through Jesus, our Lord and Savior, that we pray. Amen.